but sometimes life is just gonna be life and it's not all gonna go your way and you just have to laugh it off. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. How are you doing today? How is your heart? How is your life going? Are you in a season of peace and consistency? Are you in a season of change where everything feels like it's in limbo? I ask because it is a very thematic topic for today's uh, podcast episode. Today we are going to be talking all about finding a sense of consistency and constancy when everything feels like it's changing, finding a sense of peace during times of pain and hardship, illness and injury. So we're going to be talking about a lot of really powerful stuff today and some lessons I've picked up the hard way that I think might be helpful for you all as well. So that is why I ask you these questions. Where are you in your life? What is going on? I will tell you all about my life and what is going on, all of the changes that have ensued since I last sat down to record. Even though you listen to these every week, you should know that sometimes when I'm doing my job well, I have a bit of a backlog of episodes recorded so that when life gets crazy, as it is right now, I can rely on that for a couple of weeks, but alas, we are almost out of that backlog, so I am now sitting down to record, and boy, oh boy, have things changed. So before we get into all of the fun story time I have for us in store today, and the hard-earned lessons that I have gained through these hardships, let's breathe first, shall we? because that's exactly what I need, and I might argue it's probably exactly what you need to. So today, going along with the theme of finding peace, harmony, and balance in times of chaos and change, we are going to go with an oldie but a goodie, which is equal ratio breath, or box breathing. So if you're new here, welcome. We have done this breathing exercise before, but I always like to give a little synopsis of what the breathing exercise is and why we like to practice it. So equal ratio breath is very beginner friendly, but as I always like to say, it's extremely powerful as well. It's actually taught to U.S. Navy SEALs during their basic training to help them come back to a place of center, harmony, and balance whenever they are in times of extremely high stress, when their environment is changing, and when they need to focus and come back to center. So that's when we can use it as well. Whenever you feel like the world is just a little bit too much, you can do this and bring yourself back to balance. So the way this works is that we will be breathing in and out of the nose only. So no mouth breathing here. We're going to breathe in through the nose for a count of five. Hold at the top for a count of five. Exhale out of the nose for a count of five. 
and hold our breath at the bottom for a count of five. You can choose any number that works for you when you're breathing on your own time. If five is a little too long, I invite you to start with three or four. If you get to a point where you'd like to stretch yourself a little bit, maybe you start using counts of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. So find what works for you, but five tends to be a pretty good entry point. And it's just kind of a comfortable, comfortable number. So if you'd like to close your eyes, as always, you can go ahead and do so now. And let's first just take one deep cleansing breath together. So emptying out from your previous breath. And then breathing in fully through the nose, filling up all the way. This time, open your mouth and sigh it out. Beautiful. Seal the lips. Breathe in for five, four, three, two, one. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale out of the nose. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Second round. Inhale for five. Hold for five. Exhale for five. Hold for five. And inhale again. Hold for five. Exhale for five. Hold for five. Fourth round. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Slow exhale for five, four, three, two, one. And hold for five, four, three, two, one. One last breath. Inhale for five. Hold for five. Exhale for five. Hold for five. And normal breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. <sighs> Beautiful. You can flutter your eyes open to a world where you get to feel at peace once more. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed that breathing exercise. You can practice this particular technique at any time of the day. It won't keep you up. So if you have insomnia in the middle of the night and you literally just cannot fall back asleep, definitely practice this breathing exercise. It'll calm you down, bring you back to sleep. Or if you are a little stressed in the morning and you need to come back to center, it's a perfect time to do it or afternoon or after brunch or before dinner, any time of the day and at any point in the life cycle. So whether you are a three-year-old and you're having a tantrum or you are a 93-year-old who needs to calm yourself down, this is perfectly healthy and incredibly powerful. So with that behind us, let's get into today's topic. As I already mentioned, we will be talking about how to find a sense of normalcy and consistency when it feels everything in your life, everything around you is changing or chaotic. We're also going to talk about how to find peace and presence during times of pain and hardship. And yes, I did mean to alliterate with those P's. I kind of love it. So I hope you do too. But before we get into that, I need to set the stage a little with a bit of a life update because there's a reason that we will be talking about all of these topics today. And that reason is that I've moved. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe I can actually say that. I have literally moved. Um, When I say I, I mean Cal and I have moved, 
but we are not yet at our final end destination. So we're in a bit of limbo. So we moved out of California. We moved out of our precious little cozy apartment nook that we loved so much. And we said farewell to our neighborhood, to my home state, to our family members that are still in California, to our friends. We said goodbye to it all so that we can embark on our adventure where we will eventually be ending up in Thailand, as we've shared on this episode. But before we get to Thailand, we are spending just shy of two months with family on the East Coast. So we're kind of hopping between some of our family's homes so that we can see everyone one last time, We have a couple family events like weddings and things like that that we have to attend. And then we will be flying out of the United States of America and heading to Chiang Mai, Thailand. But (laughs) this has been a really crazy time. And it started, all of this chaos started in the moving process. If you have moved before, you know the chaos of moving. It's not only physically chaotic where you're often kind of what feels like living in squalor because a lot of your dishes are packed away. You're living amongst boxes. Sometimes your mattress is on the floor. At one point we didn't have a table or chairs anymore. So we were eating on the floor with like shoddy little placemats that were actually just cardboard boxes because our placemats were packed away. So that is the physical chaos, but it's also mentally chaotic and emotionally chaotic. It's mentally chaotic because you're constantly thinking about, okay, so I need to pack this in this box, but I already put that in the storage unit and this we're going to have to take with us to the East Coast and that's going to be in the Thailand backpack. So whatever your version of that was, I'm sure it was mentally chaotic. For us, it was four different piles for everything. There was the Thailand pile, there was the East Coast pile, there was the storage unit pile, and there was the donation pile. So it was crazy for weeks. But the emotional piece is that you're saying goodbye to a home or a chapter, to a neighborhood, to a state, to a country, whatever it may be in your past situations of moving. For us, it was all of the above. It was saying goodbye to the place where I grew up. It was saying goodbye to an apartment we love. It was saying goodbye to friends, to family. Soon we will be saying farewell to literally our home country. So there were a lot of emotions involved. And I wanted to say something on that note that's just so funny when I think about it. In the midst of all of this physical, mental, and emotional chaos, I had two situations that were humblingly comedic when I was not trying to be funny. I was trying to be dramatic in how sad I was about leaving. So let me tell the story because that's not going to make sense. So the night before we left, so we had the lease of our apartment was up on a Sunday. And so that Saturday night, which was our last night literally staying in the apartment, I went on a walk on my own right before dinner. Cal was still packing up some stuff and I said, hey, I'd really like to go out for a walk just to kind of say goodbye to the neighborhood alone. Uh, I was going to do one of my favorite loops around the neighborhood and then I was going to end at our special little Redwood site that I've talked about on this podcast. If you haven't heard, there's this little Redwood Grove behind this dentist building um, about a five minute walk from our apartment and Cal and I would sometimes go to the trees separately or together just to hug the trees, to pray, to ask for guidance, to grant them gratitude, all sorts of stuff. And the trees were really just, they gave us a sense of peace whenever things were crazy. So that was my idea. I was going to go for this walk, probably listen to some sad songs, imagine that I am the, you know, dramatic main character in some 
terribly sad movie, allow myself to tear up on the walk, and then I would land at the trees, let myself sob it out, and then I would go home, have dinner, we'd eat on the floor, and finish out our final night in our sweet little apartment. So that's what I wanted to do. Now this is what happened. (laughs) So I went out for the walk and about 10 minutes into the walk, I started noticing, wow, these blue skies are starting to change pretty rapidly to this dark, moody, gray cloudiness. That's interesting. I thought it was a beautiful day today. (laughs) And as I keep going, it starts to gently sprinkle. And I think, okay, I mean, I don't have even a raincoat on. I'm just in, I think I was in like a crop top leggings and just a zip up jacket. But I thought, hey, I can deal with some sprinkle. Um, You know, I'm still going on this long walk and then I'm going to end at the trees. And so on this walk, I am listening to sad music. I still remember, my gosh, the, the emotional peak of this walk. I was listening to... Josh Groban's song, You Raise Me Up, which is just such a beautiful song. I mean, whether you are Christian, whatever you believe in, that is a beautiful song. Even though it's a Christian song and I myself am not Christian, it's it's so touching. So I was listening to that, starting to tear up, thinking, oh, I can't wait to get to the trees and have my special moment with them. And just as I thought that, as I was basking in myself being the main character of this terribly sad drama, it started to hail and thunderstorm. (laughs) And so I had even been texting Cal because he had first texted me when it started to sprinkle because apparently where I was, it was sprinkling, but back where our apartment was, which was only, I don't know, a 15, 20 minute walk from where I was at that point, Cal texted me, said, oh my God, it is really coming down. I was like, oh, it's not here. I think I'm totally fine. Then it starts hailing and thunderstorming. And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, it had just been blue skies before that. I'm not even kidding. So I run to underneath these palm trees where I'm a little bit safe from the hail. And I'm texting him and I said, hey, you know, I think it'll be, I think it'll pass. I'll be fine. I'm going to wait here and then I'll, I'll, you know, walk home when it's gone. And he said, okay, if you want, you know, I'm, I'm happy to come get you. And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. Like, I really want to go on this walk. You know, I've been waiting to have this special emotional farewell solo walk with my home state, crying with my Josh Groban music. I'm going to soak up every minute of this thing. And then it starts to hail even harder I'm not kidding. And I look at my weather app and it says it's not going to stop for a long time. And I'm like, oh my God. And just then this car comes down the road and this woman rolls down the window and she said, sweetie, can I, can I take you home? I'm, I'm off to CVS to get some hair product to dye my hair tonight. It's just me and the dog in the car. Do you live near here? Can I take you? Like you're, you're stuck in the, the hail. And at first I was like, oh no, thank you. I'm fine. She was like, no, really, I, I can take you if, if you're comfortable with it. And she did not give off weird vibes. She had total nurturing mom vibes. And so I got in the car and she was so sweet. We just had such a nice conversation. And I'm thinking, oh my God, of course this would happen. In the midst of my dramatic farewell moment that I had been dreaming of, it's cut short by the reality of changing weather and the reality that sometimes Life doesn't get to be dramatic in the way you want it to and you just have to be driven home and then you're just going to have dinner and your little special farewell moment with the trees isn't going to happen. So I get in the car, we have such a nice conversation and it was actually so synchronistic and meant to be because I started talking to her about how, you know, tonight is my last night in the apartment. I'm really sad. You know, I'm from California, but my husband and I are moving to Thailand And she said, Thailand, my husband and I did that when we were your age. I was like, what? She said, yes, 
they were from, I think, Wisconsin. And when they were graduating from, I think she was getting her master's at Wisconsin and he was getting his PhD, they had graduated and they had both gotten jobs in California or were going to. So they were going to move out to the Bay Area, but they looked at each other and they said, hey, there's no time like the present. If we don't go off on the grand adventure we've both always dreamed of now, it's not going to happen because we're just going to be swept up in life as we all are. And so they each packed one backpack, which is exactly what Cal and I are doing, and they hit the road and they traveled the world, but they mainly stayed in Southeast Asia. And she even said, we loved it so much. It was the highlight of our entire lives. I mean, our favorite memories together are from that expedition that we are going to actually take our kids to Bali soon because Bali, Indonesia was one of our favorite places. And I said, oh my gosh, that's where we did our honeymoon. That's essentially how we came up with this whole idea. We fell in love with Bali and then fell in love with Southeast Asia as a whole. So anyway, it felt very synchronistic that even though my dramatic cry at the trees couldn't happen, I was picked up by this woman that was just an angel, not just an angel in the way that she was driving me home in this terrible hail thunderstorm, but in the way that she was sent to reaffirm you are on the right path. Sometimes you have to say goodbye to what you know so that you can discover what you don't. And so it was amazing just hearing her story and feeling like, okay, even though I'm sad, I've been tearing up on this walk, this is still so right. So I get home, you know, Cal and I have dinner, finish out our night. And then the next day was example number two of this beautiful, dramatic thing that I wanted to happen that didn't end up happening. Because as I said, sometimes sometimes life is just a little too lifey. It's just a little too real. So the plan for Cal and I was that our very last night, that Sunday evening, even though we weren't staying overnight, we had to be out of the apartment that night, we were going to stay all day. We had a bunch more packing to do. And then we were going to go to our favorite Thai restaurant down the street to say goodbye to them. Because a long story short, I believe I've told this story on the podcast before, but that Thai restaurant was the reason why Cal and I lived in the city that we lived in, in the Bay Area. Because my mom, Cal, and I had been out for dinner one night. We had essentially stumbled upon this Thai restaurant. After dinner, I said, hey, do you guys want to go for a walk? We stepped outside. First thing we saw was an apartment building that was the number 333. And Cal looked at me and he said, oh man, we're going to live here, aren't we? And I said, you bet, because 333 is my special number. It pops up whenever I'm on the right path or kind of sending me guidance. It's magical. But we kept walking, and as we were walking around the downtown on this poppin' Friday night, we just fell in love with that little city's downtown, and so we decided to live there. So literally the reason we lived where we did was because of this Thai restaurant, but we had also become such good friends with the owners. It was owned by this adorable, really sweet, warm, nurturing, compassionate Thai family who had been in the Bay Area for decades at that point. The food was amazing. It was 100% organic. They had a ton of vegan options. And we went there for pretty much every milestone or celebratory dinner. We went there the very first night that we stayed in our apartment together the day after our wedding because the day after our wedding, we still had some family in town. This was two years ago. And so we went to dinner at this favorite Thai restaurant with some of our family members. And it was the first night in the apartment. So long story short, you can see why it was going to be this beautiful, big, celebratory, dramatic thing that we were going to go to this Thai restaurant one last time, say goodbye to the owners, enjoy our favorite yellow curry one final time. And then guess what? So it's that Sunday night and we're ready for dinner. And for whatever, for whatever reason, I thought I'm going to look on Google just to make sure that their hours haven't changed or anything. And I realize, based on Google, that is, oh, it's Easter today. 
they're closed. (laughs) And so we couldn't go to our beloved Thai restaurant. And in both of these scenarios, it really was comedic. It's like the universe is almost saying, yeah, I know you want this big, dramatic farewell send off. But sometimes life is just going to be life and it's not all going to go your way and you just have to laugh it off. So that's what we did. We laughed it off. And then as we drove to Cal's dad's house that night where we were staying that that evening, uh, we just went to a random Thai restaurant in our neighborhood that we'd never been to. And we literally just ate curry in the car. We both burned our mouths because it was the freaking hottest, I mean, temperature hottest curry I've ever had in my entire life. So it was just so meant to be, you know? Um, I do have to mention that that Sunday, Cal and I went to the trees together and I got to have my farewell cry with the trees. And uh, Cal actually gifted the trees some of the rocks and like seeds and things that he's collected over the years. He always liked collecting little stones and boulders and things. So he had um, gifted them to the trees and I gifted the trees my tears and gratitude. So we ended up having a beautiful send off, but I just had to bring up those stories because I just see them as these humbling comedic moments that sometimes... Most of the time, we can be the main character of our lives. And our lives can be these beautiful, dramatic, magical things. But sometimes when you're wanting to have this beautiful cry at the trees, a hailstorm's going to hit. Or Sometimes when you're going to have this beautiful farewell at your favorite Thai restaurant, right before you embark on your adventure to Thailand, the restaurant will be closed. (laughs) So... I just wanted to bring that up because those moments are just laughable and very humbling. So with all of that in mind, I wanted to touch a little bit on the topic of change because as you can probably imagine, I just talked a lot about the chaos that we've had over the last few weeks moving, but uh, we've also just had so much change in our lives recently because we moved out of our apartment in the Bay Area and then for um, one day, I guess a day and a half, we stayed with Cal's dad who also lives in the Bay Area of California but a different different part. He's closer to the coast. So we stayed with him and then we flew to the East Coast to be with Cal's mom and stepdad for a few days And then we drove a handful of hours from there to where my parents live on the East Coast. So I had actually calculated in less than a week, I think it was five or six days, we had stayed in four different locations and three of them were in different states. So that's pretty wild. And whenever I have experiences like that where I am just surrounded by change and chaos and nothing is normal, nothing is routine, nothing is what my body has come to expect, I have to create a sense of normalcy for myself because my environment is not going to give it to me. So I wanted to tell you my top three tips on how to find a sense of consistency and normalcy and it's all going to be okay when A, either everything is changing around you or B, it feels like nothing's going to be okay. So these are my three tips. Tip number one is actually to stick to your normal routines. Whether you are quote unquote a routine person or not a routine person, we all do have routines, even if you are the least routine person ever. For example, I know my mom is totally not a routine person, but she still finds so much peace having her morning coffee. Then she likes every day to be different, which is phenomenal and fun, but That morning coffee time is her special time. And so whatever your routine is, whether it is a morning walk, whether you like to 
exercise in the evenings or in the mornings, whatever you like to do, the things that keep you sane at home, take them on the road with you. (laughs) I mean, take them on the road as in if you're in a situation like Cal and I right now where we're constantly changing locations, environments, states, homes, family surroundings, but stick to your normal routines when everything feels like it's crazy because those things will ground you. So for me personally, no matter where I am in the world, this will be true even when we touch ground in Thailand in a couple of months, Cal and I start every single morning with lemon water or lemon honey water, depending on how we're feeling. And it's just a great way to kickstart your digestion, get yourself rehydrated after essentially a 12-hour fast where you've been sleeping and have not been consuming liquids, hydration. And it just makes you feel really, really good. It, It starts your day off right. So we always start with our massive water bottle of our lemon honey water. And then I like to go for a walk and then I do my morning workout. Then I shower, I eat breakfast, I get on with my day. And so even when my workout doesn't look the same as it does at home, if I'm in a home that, or an Airbnb or a hotel or whatever that doesn't have the dumbbells I'm used to, whatever, like I get down and I do push-ups, I do squats using body weights or holding books for a little extra weight. So there are always ways to keep your routine consistent, to help yourself feel grounded and safe and normal, no matter what kind of environment you're in. Granted, there might be some days where it's off, like when Cal and I are on our 22 hours of flying to Thailand, you know, I might not get to do my uh, normal Pilates in the airplane, but (laughs) you get my point. So tip number one is stick to your normal routines. Tip number two is find little pockets of stillness in your everyday life. I have found over the last couple of weeks that even, I'll be honest, sometimes I'll just go to the bathroom and as I'm sitting on the toilet, I just put my phone down for a second and I take a few deep breaths and I realize that The world is not spinning as quickly as it feels like it is for me. That is just my own world, my own thoughts, my own life right now. And when I find those pockets of silence and stillness, I remember, oh, like life isn't this chaotic for everyone right now. The world is still turning slowly. The earth is still on its right axis, following the same orbit as it always does. It's all going to be okay. And I think when we take those moments to find a little stillness and silence, we remember that part of the chaos is just the chaos within our own heads, the chaos between our two ears. And so finding truly even 30 seconds to just maybe close your eyes and take one breath, it's in those moments that you remember it's not as crazy as you think it is. And it's all going to be okay. Just breathe. It's going to be all right. So that's my tip number two, to find pockets of stillness and silence every single day. And then tip number three is to talk to yourself like you're a child. What I mean by this is that throughout this chaotic transition time, I parent myself. I talk to myself like I'm a kid to remind myself that it's all going to be okay. I talk to myself about, you know, what I need to do before I can relax. I talk to myself about what I think will make me feel better. So for example, I might say, hey Dev, I know there's a lot going on right now, but everything is okay. Everything is in order. You've just landed in X location. You'll be here for two days. This is what we have going on during this time. You're going to do the best you can and nothing more than that. And then after that, we're going to move on to this location. So just talk to yourself like you're a kid. You know, tell yourself what's going on, what you need, what's happening. Um, Grant yourself what you want as well in these times of chaos. If you need 
an extra piece of chocolate like let your five-year-old self have the piece of chocolate it's okay (laughs) life can be hard sometimes and it's okay to treat yourself and allow yourself to just feel a little bit safer having that piece of chocolate or I don't know having a special drink that you don't always let yourself have so tip number three is talk to yourself like you're a kid And then I have just a quick bonus tip. So I guess bonus tip or tip number four, if you are changing locations as Cal and I are, because I know not all chaos means that you are moving or changing locations, but sometimes it is. When you are changing locations, I once heard this amazing, amazing advice from a spiritual teacher that I love. And she said, whenever you land in a new place, Introduce yourself to the land. Tell her who you are, where you come from, what you need, what you like, what you already notice about her, what you love about her already. And it helps you just get familiar with the land and in kind of a spiritual, energetic, emotional way, it lets her get to know you as well. So I haven't done this yet because we've kind of been on the road uh, to various places, as you can hear, but I definitely want to do this soon. And especially when we land in Thailand, I'm going to say, hi, my name is Devin. I'm an American and I'm so happy to be here. You know, I come from this kind of lineage. These are the things I love. These are the things I'm looking forward to experiencing on your land. Thank you for having my husband and I, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's a beautiful bonus tip. Number four, which is just talk to the land on which you've landed and introduce yourself like you're a new friend because you are. So those are my four tips. Really quickly, I will run through them again. So remember, these are the four tips to find a sense of normalcy and consistency when life is chaotic or you are in the midst of massive change. Tip number one is stick to your normal routine or at least as close as you can get. Tip number two is to find pockets of stillness and silence every single day, even if that means taking one deep breath when you are sitting on the toilet. Number three, talk to yourself like you are a child. Tell yourself it's going to be okay. Tell yourself what's going on, the things to expect, and that it'll all be back in order soon. And then bonus tip number four, if you are changing locations as I am currently, is to introduce yourself to the land on which you've just arrived. So those are my tips for change and uh, chaos, essentially. And then I just wanted to round out with one last quick story slash lesson, which is yet another lesson on surrendering. And I know I've talked quite a bit about the power of surrendering in this podcast, and it just comes up time and time again. So for me recently, the very first day that Cal and I got to my parents' house, or I guess the day after we arrived on a Friday night, and then that Saturday was our first full day here, And it was my dad's 60th birthday. So it was a big milestone birthday. And we were going to have a little bit of a celebration for him just with some family and a cake. And I was so excited to celebrate him. We had gotten him this some awesome gifts, had written him a card. I had a special outfit picked out for this little birthday celebration. And then that Saturday morning, I woke up feeling just kind of queasy and I thought oh I don't know maybe it'll just go away and then long story short um, I ended up with the worst and longest lasting stomach bug I have ever had where I was in complete misery for 13 hours straight and when I've had stomach bugs in the past I feel like often you know, it passes in the morning once I've kind of done my business and uh, then you, you feel tired, but you're okay. Oh no. I mean, literally it was constant for 13 hours. It lasted from 8 a.m. in the morning. It was really even before that I couldn't sleep from like 5 a.m. on. 
But like 8 a.m. in the morning until around 9 p.m. at night when it had finally passed. And I learned so many lessons in that time. And I think this is true of not just when you have illness, but even if you are injured or if something in your life isn't going your way even. It's just another lesson in surrender. And I was talking to Cal the other day about how I said, wow, it's so funny that of all people, you know, that I did not get to celebrate my dad and wear my cute little outfit that I'd planned for this little family get together. And I love celebration. (laughs) It's like this whole podcast is me celebrating life. I love cheering people on. I love celebrating people. I love people getting together. I love dressing up. I love going out. I love celebrating with cake. And the fact that of all people, I was literally on the floor. I did not move for 13 hours other than between the bathroom and laying down on the floor right outside of the bathroom. It just felt so ironic. And uh, he said, yeah, I was honestly really impressed that you didn't whine about it at all. Like you, you were totally cool about having to miss out on your dad's celebrations. You were home alone for a lot of that day as we were out celebrating. And I said, I mean, I I acted that way because there was nothing I could do. It was completely outside of my control. So what's the point in complaining, whining, even being upset? Sure, I felt bummed, but because it was out of my control, I couldn't even gather enough strength to feel really upset about it. It was like, well, this is what it is. (laughs) So (laughs) I think whether you are sick or injured and you can't engage in the typical physical activity that you usually enjoy, it's the perfect time to practice your surrender muscles and just let it go. Let go of the control because there is no control. And that's true every day in life, but I think it's heightened during times of, let's say, illness or injury. And so not just that, but I also felt <laughs> between the waves of nausea, I felt almost this sense of gratitude where I realized when you are sick, especially, you're kind of in this weird portal. Like you go to another dimension, another realm where you are hyper present because Pain demands presence. Discomfort demands presence. And so in our normal day-to-day life, we can be distracted by a million and one things. We can be multitasking. We have this really high threshold for stimulation where maybe you have the TV on and you're scrolling on your phone and you kind of have a YouTube video up on your computer and the microwave is going and someone's talking to you. There's so much stimulation. But in times of sickness, I think honestly, especially in times of nausea, like what I had on Saturday, I couldn't listen to anything. I couldn't watch anything. It would make me dizzy. And so I kid you not when I say for 13 hours, this girl talking who usually loves listening to podcasts, watching educational videos, talking to anyone and everyone. I had 13 hours, more or less, of silence. And luckily, I have been blessed with an incredibly caretaking husband who sat right outside the bathroom door with me for probably seven hours and then when I was just on the, the ground laying on my side, like whimpering with nausea, feeling so gross, he just sat there in silence being with me. And that made all of the difference for an extrovert who couldn't really talk but still wanted to be around people. But other than that, in the evening when my family left to go celebrate my dad, I laid on the floor staring up at the ceiling for hours. It wasn't until late that night that I could finally put on a movie. And when I did, it was like, 
the simple joys of being able to watch something on my computer. But in that weird portal where I actually just had to find peace and presence with 13 hours of stillness and silence, oh my gosh. I mean, to my conscious waking self, that is misery itself. But somehow when we enter that portal, our needs change and our abilities change. And so we have a lower threshold for stimulation and we're actually more comfortable in the stillness and the silence because you're just focusing on the pain and wishing it to go away. I mean, I was literally praying to God in the bathroom. (laughs) I was like, please take this away. This is so terrible. So anyway... Just a weird side note, but I wanted to share that as well because I feel like it goes along with everything we're talking about. Just finding peace during times of pain and hardship, finding gratitude even when things are hard, gratitude for the chaos that is my life right now, gratitude for the fact that my body was fighting hard to get me back to homeostasis gratitude for my husband that was sitting right outside of the bathroom door just sitting in silence I think he was playing a golf game on his phone while I was just dying inside so it just brings a sense of gratitude for the small things again and also if you're injured as well the second you can finally walk on that bad knee or use that bad wrist it feels like life is so magical again And it really is. It's magical during the hardships too. I mean, I was finding moments of gratitude in the midst of my hell vacation. Um, So anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say on that. But I will wrap up this by just sharing that I feel like Cal and I during this weird transitionary time where we are hopping between our family's houses before going to Thailand, it feels like we are in the limbo portal before landing at our final destination. And I found this to be such a great analogy for so many things in life. Every time Cal and I travel on airplanes, so we go to an airport, I always say to him, I feel like airports are truly like a transition portal that for us in California for example we went from being in our apartment this place that we know and love to just being a nameless stranger in a sea of strangers at the airport where in that moment no one has a home no one has a destination you're just in the present moment where you're one of the strangers in this in-between portal And then finally, after hours at the airport and hours on the plane portal, you land at a destination and it's like you've you've earned your right to be there. And I feel that we are in the limbo portal right now. And so I wanted to ask you, where in your life do you feel like you're in the limbo portal? Where in your life are you sensing a lot of change or a need for transition Where are you in limbo? And then on top of that, where in your life do you need a sense of constancy? Where are things a little bit too chaotic and all over the place? Where can you bring yourself a sense of normalcy? And where in your life do you need to surrender? Because we all have those things that we hold on to for dear life. Those areas of life where we need a sense of control And maybe it's time to just lighten your grip a little bit. And when you surrender and when you bring yourself a sense of normalcy, constancy, and peace in times of chaos and hardship, that's when life gets magical again. So with all of that story time and those tips, tricks, and hard-earned lessons, I will wrap up today's episode I hope you enjoyed it as I hope you enjoy every week's episode. If you did, please, please, please share it with a family member or friend and please feel free to rate and review the podcast anywhere you get your podcasts, whether it is Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. You can also follow me on YouTube at Devin or Shell Hine where I have the video 
uh, versions of all of these episodes. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram too, which is Devin underscore Rochelle underscore. And it's All Magic Podcast. Okay. I think those are all of the logistics. I adore you. I see you. I am sending you feelings of peace and constancy, normalcy. I'm sending you sweet surrender, my friend. And until next week, goodbye for now, my friends. <laughs>